Good morning. Another weekend, another van project. So my van project this time is going to be the cabinets. And uh, I should say more specifically the cabinet framing. I'm, uh, I, I do what I always do at the start of a project. Uh, I actually start researching it and, you know, blogs and YouTube videos and, and so on. And normally I draw from many, many different sources. In this particular case though, I found one video so clean and uh, straightforward and it's by 70 Savage that I actually am just following it directly. So I'm putting a link below and you can get to that. I also, about a month before, start ordering all the things I need for that project so that they're here and I don't have to worry about, you know, delays in shipping or something being out of stock and I need to go to another another store to get going. So um, all of this stuff is in 70 Savage's uh, video. He's got links at the bottom of his uh, video for that. So go ahead and click those links to um, order them because then he'll get the affiliate fee for it. Uh, I will say just in general that all these items are meant to do one of two things, either hold uh, two boards in kind of a 90 degree perpendicular basis so that you can uh, affix them together or to drill uh, holes in it in some way. So either for pockets to put your screws and have them hidden or to um, put holes or pockets in for the door hardware. Um, in terms of importance, <laughs> this piece of cardboard is probably the most important piece of tool. And the reason is, is you have to go make a template. Uh, you, the idea here is we're building the, the, the framing or the ribs of the uh, cabinets, right? And then we'll affix it to the inside of the, of the van. And you have to get the curve perfect and the fit perfect for the cabinets because the top of the van is curved and the side of the van is curved so nothing's at 45 degree angles and and so anyways it's important to make sure it fits with cardboard and I because this is the second day I actually filmed this video yesterday as well before I started but for some reason uh, the camera wasn't going and so I'm doing it again but the advantage is that I've successfully done my my templating. Um, one additional piece I, I want to kind of highlight as important is in the creation of the contouring is uh, Seven of Savage went through a process which I'll explain in the next video but uh, this tool right here which is a contour gauge you can get um, from a lot of different places I talk about again this in the next video is um, so valuable <laughs> and uh, just as a quick summary I believe it took Seven of Savage over two hours to do his contouring uh, in, using his method and using this one it took me maybe 10 minutes so um, definitely worth it. Uh, oh the wood I'm using is birch. Uh, it is something that, he, that Seven of Savage recommended but I tend to do my research and everything before I buy even if it's recommended and uh, birch is a great piece of wood for uh, doing construction and cabinets. Part of the reason is it's it's uh, laminate layers that go in the middle of it create a really strong um, medium for screwing in from the side, which uh, plywood tends to not have that. It's just, it just tends to be wood that's been pressed together, particle wood pressed together. So, um, okay, with that, we will get going to the uh, next step, which is making um, the uh, template and then starting to cut out the, uh, the wood. The first step of building your cabinets is to create essentially ribs or or a, a structure to it because you want it to be as light as possible. And in order to do that, you need to understand the exact contour of the uh, where the cabinets are going to go. Uh, now, the in the video from Seven of Savage, it he ended up kind of doing a iterative process using cardboard and kind of penciling it out and marking it, cutting it, marking it, cutting it. And he said it took him over two hours of this process to do it. However, uh, as mentioned, this is has been an invaluable tool for me, which is a contour gauge. And what it does is it essentially almost like uh, his example of Play-Doh and how it just copies exactly what you need for um, understanding where to drill holes, which it's a brilliant idea. This one, not my idea, by the way, but this tool is made for specifically copying contours, which this is. I have used this 
so many times throughout my van build. And uh, like as an example, cutting the floors going around the wheel wells, just one. Uh, so I believe this is actually gonna short circuit him for doing the contouring and creating the template. So we'll see. Anyways, it's quite easy. You just put it up and I'm gonna do it in three batches. I'm gonna do it first with the corner and then I'll do it another time on the surface and one here on um, the lower portion and just sort of build out my, my template. Okay, there we go. And again, there really isn't an, an iterative process in this. It's just a one-time thing. All right, so now that I've done top or the corner uh, then the corner we'll do the upper section start here That looks like a really good fit. I think we got ourselves a winner. And I would say that took maybe a total of 10 minutes. I do need to figure out how low I want my uh, cabinet to go, but that has nothing to do with the contouring portion. So I think success. Well, I figured out why uh, <laughs> my video didn't work yesterday when I was filming it. Uh, and if you saw a picture of what I have set up right now, I feel like I'm a, in a little mini photo shoot with an umbrella. Turns out, so I'm using my iPhone for most everything I can in terms of filming. And I, um, it was in the sun like I am right now and it's quite warm. In any case, it, it overheated. And so as a result, it shuts down after like 30 seconds of filming when that happens. So uh, back to this regularly scheduled program. Uh, after cutting out your template, uh, the next thing you do, because you want to make sure it fits, is cardboard, is you go ahead and uh, transfer this to your birch wood, and then you cut that out, and that, which is this guy. And after you do that, you make sure this fits, uh, and then you start using this as your template. And you do this for two reasons. One is just in case there was uh, something different with the cardboard, you can assure that this is the exact same thing you'll use for every other template after this. And the additional piece is I have these notches here to hold my one by two pieces of, uh, of wood. And this is gonna create the ribs in the framing of the, the cabinets and create a lot of strength without, without adding really any weight to it. Um, so you can make sure that these notches are in the exact same spot for each one, which is important from a um, continuity standpoint. I also am using my corners on my wood, uh, putting it on because I get two 90 degree angles and I know I only have four corners and I'll eventually have to use the middle, but I figured right now I'll, I'll take advantage of them. I've already traced this with my wood, or sorry, my pencil. And so now it's time to cut.
So you can see already uh, it's starting to take shape and the uh, I ended up marking my my what do you call it the templates by uh, 1a b and c I did that for kind of all the other spots as well because uh, there's some slight the birds are back <laughs> there's some slight difference uh, in how I'm gonna uh, attach them together so you can see this one is gonna actually have a uh, one by two that goes from here to here and then this one's gonna go from the middle to here and the reason is is that it sits in a different spot on my ceiling with some of the uh, ceiling uh, shiplap coming in a little farther for some of the areas. So this will help me kind of get around that. almost finished the first frame for my first cabinet set. I am missing a uh, one by two, ran out of wood. Uh, didn't even kind of think through how much I would need, but at least now I know. So when I go back, I'll get the right amount. Uh, in any case, it, the frame itself looks done super light. You can see, just let go for a second. I mean, very, very light, super sturdy. And so now we're gonna see if it fits. So it should go in theory against that side. Like that? Yeah, just like that. Uh, in this one should go back like that. Okay. But that's okay. I mean, obviously, when I screw it in. Are we screwing it in now? No, I'm not gonna screw it now. But hold it up. Like, just. So basically this one just lines up. Yeah. Alright. But I think this looks good. Yeah. This will work. Alright. And this is a cabinet, this is this is gonna be the size of the cabinet, right? Because the window. Correct. Uh, I will have some lighting underneath it. Okay. Yeah. And I'll have
Good morning. So today we are going to uh, solve some problems. Or I should say I get an opportunity to try some different things than I was planning. Uh, first one is as I was building these, uh, they're actually now done, which is awesome, at least the framing of them. As I was building them and putting them up and kind of measuring them inside the van, I started realizing how much shaking the van is gonna do when I'm going down kind of off-roading adventures. And I became concerned with uh, that force and if they would tear out of the wood supports that I have in there. Now, I do have wood kind of all along the side of the van and in the roof or in the ceiling, as you've seen. Uh, but still, when weight's in here and there's movement and, and so on, I just, I just didn't want to chance it. So I'm gonna go and do something that I saw 7 Savage do in the video I mentioned. And I'm gonna use these plus nuts. Uh, plus nuts, uh, a lot of people haven't heard of these, but they're very similar to rivets. Uh, rivets, you know, you, you put in and they deform the backside and the front side with a pin in the middle, essentially, and, you know, create um, a connection. Plus nuts have a very similar form factor. It goes up and it, this is brass and it deforms the back a little bit. Actually, sorry, it, it deforms um, the back of this portion and the front, pushes it together, but it leaves inside a threaded insert that allows you to be able to thread a, a, um, a bolt in creating a really, really stable uh, connection in the process. So I'm gonna go and do that and uh, go back and measure and uh, where I have any cross beams, I'm gonna you know, uh, drill holes, put these in, I'll show that in a second. So the second challenge is the, uh, the back of this. And I, I know that uh, it was mentioned in Seven of Savage's video at the end, he said, oh, it was really hard, but he didn't really show what he did, he, he said he just put brad uh, nails in as he went along and used a lot of them to bend it. But as you can see, this is, this is, it, it's really solid. And part of the issue is, is that it's such a short piece of wood and they're relatively long. And this one's gonna be the worst because it's, it's eight feet and I have to bend that. So I did a little YouTube watching and, and some reading last night and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some heat and moisture. I have, uh, my grass got watered last night, so it's wet down below the grasses. So I, I'm laying these on top in the heat and I'm gonna let it sit there for a couple hours while I do this other part of my project, hoping that the moisture inside just starts to come up through through the, the sun. And then of course, heating the wood with the sun as well. And then I will probably even get a hair dryer and um, hair dry it or a heat, heat it from the outside a little bit and then do the same thing. We'll put it on and I'll slowly start to, you know, add brad nails in and bend it. But I'm hoping that'll make it a little more pliable. So that's the two things. And then the next step after that is going to be painting, which is exciting because that'll be the last step. And then we install these back into the van. I just, I just tried uh, doing this plus nut in a spot a little bit further down and it worked great. Uh, well, even better is in the uh, support beams that are in the sprinter, there's a small hole and a little bit of a bigger hole. And at least using this M10, uh, it, it it just it fits in there with just a little little bit of play. But as soon as you you know um, clamp this down, it it's a beautiful fit. So I don't actually have to drill anything into my uh, into my ceiling, which is even better. I do have to cut a little bit away here because I need it to be farther this way. Uh, and I have this little uh, tongue groove left over from my shiplap. I know I'm not putting any shiplap farther, but I need this space empties because it goes right, right like there. So uh, I'm using my, what is this like an all in one tool, I think. And I'm just cutting away uh, a little box out so I can, I can get to the metal underneath, but it's quite straightforward. put this on just so I don't so 
you open it all the way up. And then this, you want this to be as far up this way as you can because you'll get the most force coming down. And then put your appropriate plus nut on. Lock it all down. It is really hard. Actually, I had my son come help me with this last one. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna do it again. He is quite a bit stronger. So we'll get him to come out. <laughs> I'm just gonna film, I wanna film it. Well, I can't even, it just goes in this hole, but like it's not even okay. partially. So you just gotta push, remember, push up. This one's um, different, I guess. I don't know. You want me to do this side? And I don't think that'll work because it's going to be too unstable. Is it even? Yeah, yeah. it's correct. Does it even? But yeah, yeah. Press down, will it do anything? Yeah, it'll start to deform the metal, and you can't get it back in. That's why it, it like. I don't know. It's weird. It doesn't. Literally, feels like it won't go. Won't go. <laughs> like it's stuck. But I mean, it could. Can you move this camera? Or actually, I'll do it from this side then. Can you try to do it like... There we go. Go on. Yeah. I know this side didn't, but I was just wondering, maybe that's... Maybe it's actually... I, yeah, yeah it's, it's solid in there. All right, thank you. Yep. I don't feel so bad. Although, what'd you say? That one was hard. Yeah. Yeah, and this last one I was like before calling you, I'm like, no, I'm determined. I'm gonna do it without Joseph, but nope. <laughs> okay, thanks. Hello. I guess uh, now's as good a time as any is doing uh, a little uh, kind of recap lessons learned. Uh, I am uh, getting close to finishing, I guess the first kind of full phase of the cabinet building uh, which I built the framing uh, which was incredibly rewarding uh, cutting all the pieces and kind of figuring out the contour of the van and you know fitting everything and putting it together it came really well and then I moved to the, the next piece of that which I thought was gonna be the the easiest or relatively easy uh, is I put plus nuts in the roof I decided that the strength of everything and moving around as I mentioned uh, I just needed plus nuts versus kind of putting directly into wood it worked really well I was like oh I'm on a roll uh, then I got to the point of of um, putting holes in the the top where it's gonna mount through and I had a little difficulty there it, it turned out that the plus nuts were off a tiny bit or I should actually say my holes were off a tiny bit and so I guess one little piece of advice is when you when you ready to drill your holes uh, make sure you measure like 10 times uh, before you do it have somebody help you it's it's so much better than doing it by yourself uh, actually you see my nose I was trying it by myself actually with the smallest oh this guy the smallest one and uh, it it uh, fell forward and cracked me right on the on the nose so um, I guess I'm putting everything, blood, sweat, and tears into this project. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I, if you make the holes a tiny bit bigger than what you need, it gives you a little bit of play, which is really, I think, helps a lot. That helped me. Uh, and I'm talking about holes that the hardware is going to go through into the plus nuts. Then I moved on to, I was like, all right, home stretch, the, uh, the backing. And uh, 70 Savage used 
plywood, but birch plywood. Uh, all of my stuff's birch. He also used birch plywood, and I suspect that that birch bends a lot easier. As a matter of fact, if you look online, which I did, uh, there's people that make f entire pieces of furniture out of like one single piece of birch, uh, and actually birch plywood. Uh, I know they steam it and they use it, but it obviously bends well enough to do that. When I went to go get it, uh, they were out, and when I talked to Home Depot and other places, they nobody had even a record of when it was going to come in or get refilled, and the reason was uh, there is wood shortage. So I moved to standard plywood, which was a mistake. It does not bend, uh, and you can see uh, in some pictures I have that I tried to uh, do everything. I put wet towels on it. I sat, sat it out in the, in the 90 plus degree sun. I put sandbags on it to bend it. Nothing worked. So I went back again and ended up getting some plastic. And I know this is not natural and good for the environment, but I, I, uh, I didn't have kind of a next step. And I used that and it bends pretty well, especially in the sun. I did try to nail it at first and the nails went right through because it was plastic. So I moved to screws. The key with screws though, and because it's plastic, um, they'll stop right as soon as the, the head of the, the screw hits the plastic. So you need to countersink it, which uh, you, if you buy a set of these little countersink tools, they, they're really useful for the whole van project. Anyway, so I, I screwed the top and then I bent it and screwed the back. Uh, I think that's about it. And I've got all three done. I have them dry fitted. I put them up in there to make sure, you know, everything fit before I put the backing on. And now I am going to sand any little edges that are out. And then I'm going to go and fill in any holes or cracks that, that are there before I go and do the paint. So I think that's it. Oh, and having masks around, especially for, I know it's due to COVID, but having masks around to sand this plastic is really good because when you sand it, it has an awful smell. I just wanted to talk real briefly about the backing here. Uh, as you've seen, I've had lots of trouble with it and uh, I, I realize now why 70 Savage, the video that I based most of what I did here on, uh, why he was able to use it. He actually used two different pieces and I cannot believe that I uh, didn't pick up on that <clears throat> with as many times as I've seen his video. Uh, in any case, so he, he uses you know a piece here and then there's a channel that goes in the corner that he uses for wire and then he has the back. I just went with one continuous piece uh, and that's that's the real big difference. So I don't think without a lot of a lot of trouble and I wasn't able to do it as you saw to have one continuous piece of plywood bend at this radius. Um, so I ended up going with this plastic. And um, anyways, so that's that's really the big difference. Good morning. Finally getting on to painting. A uh, number of false starts, but I think I've got it now. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was even able to get my first coat of the polyurethane last night. And a uh, little trick when you, if you're not done painting with a brush, but you, you're done for the day, put it in a plastic bag and stick it in the refrigerator. It'll allow you to use the brush the next day, next week. It, it's great. Uh, so did polyurethane on every inside surface. That's essentially every surface is not going to have white. My whites are going to be the front surface and the side and then the bottom. And uh, I am using, uh, it's called Fog Beacon. And my, uh, a friend of mine, my wife's actually, the Duro Poxy HP, she says is great to use for cabinets. And she's, she restores furniture. And so I, I'm trusting, I know she knows what she's talking about. So always go with <laughs> somebody that knows what they're talking about. Anyways, and I also had them help me with colors. I told them the approximate color I wanted, that I wanted a, a white, but some gray in it to uh, bring in the rest of my van. I, I'm slightly colorblind, so I can't see some nuances. And as a result, I had them help me just make sure we were picking out the right stuff. We painted large pieces of cardboard and then put them up. Uh, the other thing with the cabinet color is you need to also pick out your wall color at the same time, because obviously they're gonna be next to each other. So um, we did that too. Anyways, I think it's gonna be good and uh, it's time to put my second coat of polyurethane on. And I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do two coats. This particular one actually is 
is extra thick, so maybe even one coat would be fine, but I have plenty of it. So I figured I might as well put a second one on just to make sure I didn't miss any spots. And uh, that's it. Uh, I put the polyurethane on, uh, did two coats, and now I've taped it to get ready for putting the primer on. Instead of using kind of standard primer, uh, I was told to just, as a little trick to save a little money, I'm using my sample paint I have that I was trying to pick out different colors with. So I'm gonna use that as my primer first and get as, use as much of that as I can to probably be enough to do the whole thing. Uh, and then I will put my final coat of paint on. Getting exciting. So uh, this is gonna go right up against, this is the bottom of my cabinets and I need to be able to remove this, just my cabinets, just in case I need to get inside uh, this guy. So it means I have to get to all my screws down here. And so I'll show you really quickly what I came up with my concoction for uh, drilling uh, basically a pocket here to be able to get to it. It's all about doing things in stages. Okay, so the key is to sort of creep up on what you're looking for in terms of it because it's a very awkward drill but i want to you saw before create a half um crescent shaped so i'm going to use my drill bit from my uh, craig dr um corner drill just to get it really sharp and you, you need something to drill into if you just try to do it without it it jumps all over the place so i'm using this sacrificial piece of wood. And then jump to the next size. See if it fits. Perfect. 
you can see I'll be able to get to each one of the uh, screws. Just got to sand it a little bit now. Hello. I thought I would show something that I'm finding very useful right now for building my cabinets, at least the uh, structural framing of it. So up to this point, I've been using uh, a method of when I put two pieces of wood together, uh, it's where I countersink a hole, a pre-drill a hole in the back of the wood I need, and uh, then drill directly into the wood that's perpendicular. And it's strong, but you can kind of see it does move a little bit. Uh, a far stronger, like infinitely stronger uh, method is using pocket joints. And for that, I did buy this Craig jig. Uh, I think this is the K5 model. And I just thought I would show you how easy it is to use this thing and how strong of a joint uh, that gets created from it. So they, at least with the K5, they give you the entire setup, uh, a clamp or a mechanism to hold the wood. This, uh, I set it up already. This allows me to make sure that when I'm drilling my holes there, um, I have the wood in the same spot each time. They uh, give you the drill bit itself to uh, put the holes. You actually start out by very easy. You, you look up on a chart to see what size screw you need. And then from that, you see here um, what size screw you're gonna use. And then put your drill into this, into the hole like that, and then you tighten uh, this clamp right here that allows you to have the perfect depth for your, your piece. And then you simply put it in, clamp it down, and then you drill both holes. Until you hit your until you hit your stop. And then I do have to put a little vacuum on this. They do it would help get the sawdust out, but you can see it creates these two uh, pocket holes. And then simple as lining that up and I just made this little there we go fixture to hold it for myself and you uh, get the correct size screws that remember you already discovered when you were when you were putting um, kind of figuring out what wood you're going to use Screw them in. And I actually used on the other joints that I was doing for the cabinets, I used glue on each one to make it stronger. And they claim glue is optional on this, and I believe it because of how strong this is. So there we go. And you can you can see this. I'm actually moving it and it really doesn't move at all. Whereas this one, look at that. And the more you move it, the more it goes. So this one doesn't move at all, really strong. And this one, you know, already it's, it's getting looser and looser. I'm barely, barely moving it or barely applying force to it and it moves. So this is what I'm doing for all of my, my structural under cabinets that I'm doing um, that isn't attached to the roof. So I thought that would maybe be useful for you guys. Hello and good morning. Uh, it is uh, nice out. It's nice and cool, uh, a little breeze. So, you know, it's a perfect day to actually work on the van. And my, uh, my project today is to redo something that I've already done. Uh, I was getting really close to finishing the, the framing structure for my underset of my cabinets. And um, that would have been it for my cabinet work. That would have been the last piece of this video because I don't plan on doing 
the shelving or uh, the doors in this this particular stage. I'm going to do it later. <clears throat> so I had a few more boards to go, then I was going to pull it out and uh, paint it and then put it back in. But had a friend next door come over to help me uh, really just eye this piece on this side for my cabinet. And as he's doing it, he's eyeing this part of my cabinet. And uh, of course, I pick up on I picked up on his uh, nonverbal cues and said, "Why are you looking at that so much?" And he he said, uh, I, "Is it square?" <laughs> and I, of course, I said, "Oh yeah, absolutely. I uh, I used this to make sure that I was square on the top and the bottom." He goes, "No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the the angle that this is. And you might be able to see it in the video right now, but the distance between this and the side of my electrical unit, my tiny watts solar system." And the bottom is very different. It's much wider up here and down here. And that's because uh, the front of this is leaning like this. As a matter of fact, when I measured it last night, it's an inch closer on the bottom to this unit versus the top. And uh, so what that means is while the front is perfectly flush and, and level, uh, so all the cabinets would look in line, which is what I did when I looked down this, I said, oh, it all looks perfect they would be leaning like this. So my cabinets would look like they were leaning forward, like you were gonna, you know, fall or something. And uh, maybe no one would know, but I would know. And so uh, as much of a pain as this is gonna be, I'm gonna redo this. Hopefully I can do it a lot more efficiently this time since I've now learned how to do pocket, um, pocket joints, which I'm very glad I did that because now I can unscrew the pocket joints in no time. And uh, I have my angles like on the back that I needed to, to do, which hopefully I can just copy. It's just a bigger piece of wood. Um, and then I'm gonna move out the bottom by uh, an inch and likely have to redo these boards as well because of the length. But in any case, uh, like I said, if, if, if you can't do it right the first time, then do it right the second time. <laughs> All right, time to get started. Excitement here in the uh... Happiness perfected world. I've completed version two of my under cabinet structure. And uh, like most version twos, it's it's better than the first. You know, you learn a lot from, from doing the first time. It's uh, when, you're, when you get to it a second time, if you do something a second time, it's often faster and uh, better quality. And I can say both things were the case here. So I've uh, replaced everything with one by threes on the bottom, which uh, allows me to have the appropriate uh, squareness now, not only in the front plane, uh, but also in the back. So basically all three dimensions are, are good. Um, I've also put my cross supports in that are going to be the shelving units for my under cabinets. And I've done the structure over here, which this is going to be a very shallow sort of fake cabinet that I'm going to put all my electrical stuff in so that I have easy access to it and all the switches. So I think, and then I've also completed behind, you'll see the uh, support pieces where uh, I'll end up connecting the front to the back for, again, the shelving units. So I'm gonna take everything apart now, not completely. This whole front unit was designed to actually disassemble in one big piece. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'm gonna paint it all and then install it back. And I'll consider this, this particular project done. Mm -hmm. 